Okay, and now we're started. So now we are back. This is episode two of Eat, Drink, and Be Scary. Uh, my name is Bill, and I'm here with... Oh, Ryan. <laughs> and Tom. <laughs> and joining you for the first time, producer Tanya, and now participant Tanya. Yeah, yeah. Well, but also at the same time, you, yeah, you were here last time, but... I was just hanging out. Uh, so the concept of the show is uh, that we're going to... We, we eat, drink, and then we talk about... Um, Paranormal stuff that's really fun, and uh, I'm drinking a. Um, I'm, I can't. I, I said this wrong at the bar the other night, but it's it's a bod. Uh, it's bodhisafa. Bodhisafa. How do you say that, Ryan? You you're smart. How do you say that? I would say bodhisafa. Bod- yeah, exactly. Bodhisafa. So I'm drinking a bodhisafa, which is an IPA, and I'm eating a really good brisket sandwich. Well, I haven't ate it yet, but it's got delivered to me. Uh, from uh, St. Lawrence Gridiron, which is downtown, uh, Boise, Idaho. Really good sandwiches. And uh, I'm having a White Dog Brewing's Scotch Ale, little brewery, a couple blocks away. Yeah. Delightful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't think, but this is not a local. This is from Seattle, the beer I'm drinking, which is fine. Tom, what are you drinking? I'm having a porter. It's a local one. Earlier, I had a chocolate milk. And you guys all laughed at me. Well, I'm guess. having a chocolate milk stout. I'm having a chocolate milk and then a stout. <laughs> yeah, you you brought like it's eat, drink, and be merry. And I text you guys. I'm like, drink, and then you show up with a chocolate milk. <laughs> yeah, I brought water and cough yeah. drops. Yeah, what's up? You guys are eating cough drops. Who's sick? No, I love this. They're just fantastic. We just want to Really? You guys are just eating them because they taste good? Mm-hmm. No, because it clears out your throat and you sound mellow. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. No, he doesn't Going for that silky smooth very white voice. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> Alright, well this is uh so it's episode two. Exciting stuff. Going away. Did everybody introduce themselves? No, they didn't. Did yeah. you guys all? Yeah. 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 I wasn't paying attention. I already got I'm already bored of people. <laughs> I'm already bored. I'm thinking about something else. Uh, so listen, this is what we're going to talk about first. I want to talk about this. I watched, uh, um, this morning I watched a documentary on Netflix about flat earthers. And I want to get everybody's thoughts on this because this is a really interesting thing about this documentary. And it was called, uh, the documentary was called something with a problem with the curve or, or a curve. It was something with a curve. I think it was called. I don't remember what it was called. But uh, anyway, it's about this guy who talks about how he's a celebrity, like people know him, but he wears his name on his shirt. I think his name is like Mark Sargent. And he says, his shirt says, I'm Mark Sargent. And he goes, yeah, people walk up to me, they go, are you Mark Sargent? Because it says on your goddamn shirt, you moron. So anyway, uh, they talked to a few people and the super close-minded whatnots. And it was really interesting. Like, yeah. I don't know. You just got to see it. You just got to see it. It was like really, really crazy. But my, I, I really think that they told these people that, hey, we're going to do a documentary on you guys, thinking that they're going to do a pro flat earth documentary. And by no means was that that. Well, you yeah. know that the Flat Earth Society has members all around the globe. I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that's a good one. one. That's a good one. Oh, I just moved my coffee table. Sorry. Uh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, it was a. You just watch it and you're like, oh. like I oh, I couldn't. It's like a train wreck. I can't stop watching it. I couldn't stop watching it. So what were they trying? Like, what was their main reasoning behind why the Earth was flat? Uh, okay, so the very first thing that started this is there was a gentleman. Who, uh, there was a gentleman who I guess he was a stand-up comedian or something. Are you is he having mic problems? I can hear him breathing. Well, just move your mic down a little bit. Move it down. The clip it. In the middle, clip it. We switched to lapel mics this week because Ryan was having a problem with the, we were catching everything this week. How's that? That's probably going to be better. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this guy said that he was at a he was at a NASA party with a bunch of NASA people, and somebody from NASA said, "Hey, by the way, you know the Earth is flat." It just says this to him. Like this guy just out of the blue says, from hey, NASA. From NASA, he was at a NASA party. And they said, hey, guess what? The Earth is flat. So he came on and started doing these YouTube videos saying the Earth is flat. And then a bunch of other people then just said, well, that sounds cool. I'm in. 
And of course, it's because this guy, one of the guys, this Mark Sergeant guy, is standing in uh, Seattle, or he's standing on an island outside of Seattle, and he says, "Look, I can see Seattle. There's proof. Look across the bay. There's Seattle." But why can't you see the Himalayas? There's the, why can't you see that? Why can't you see anything else? Why can I not see the Eiffel Tower? If that's the case, so anyway, this these uh, it, it ends with I'm just gonna I'm just gonna spoil it. The ending. Well, the biggest problem I have with it is solar eclipse. That, and they talk about that. That is uh, that that they talk about the eclipse, yeah. and they make reference to that. And they just they, they you know what they say? They go, oh, it's so great that we get all this. Uh, it's really great that we get all this uh, uh, media for being idiots. Like that's what they said. Like, well, a lot of people are asking us, uh, what about the solar eclipse? And it's really great that we're in the news now. What well, can you answer it? Well, we're in the news now. Anyway, uh, it ends with this guy has this really great theory. No, no, no. You guys are watching. It's it's um it's on Netflix. But uh, it ends with. These guys, well, these guys are like, they have this heavy-duty duty laser, and they said, okay, we need this flat canal, and we're going to shoot a laser across it and have three points. Uh, it's like three miles apart. And they said if point A to, a to C, if they shoot across, and point B is the same height off the ground, then they know the Earth is flat. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work because the beam was too concentrated. So they came up with a second idea, like, we'll shoot a light through these two holes and catch a camera on the other side. This is how it ends. It doesn't work. And the guy has to hold. <laughs> the, guy has to, uh, the guy has to hold. The, he's like, he goes, I'm 17 feet high. And they go, raise it up. And he raises it. He goes, now I'm 23 feet high. And he could see it. And then the guy, they all go, oh. And then it's credits. It's so great. It's so That's good. That's exactly how it ends. <laughs> yeah, oh. it does. It oh. just ends that way. And then they, you know, but these people, you're like, this can't be real. But then, but then every one of these guys jumps into some other sort of conspiracy theory. They really do. They're just like, we've never been to the moon. I mean, any just any conspiracy theory whatsoever. They're all behind all of them. Every single one, they're behind. All right, so if you get a chance to watch it, I imagine there's no flat earthers in this room. You guys are all pretty smart, so <laughs> I feel confident. I have long distance shooter friends. I mean, like, you have to account for curvature of the earth. Yeah, uh, past like even approaching even a mile. So their theory is because you can't prove to me that the Earth is round because I don't believe anything. Therefore, the Earth is flat. That's it. And oh, some people believe there's a giant dome over the Earth. They made reference to the Truman Show quite a bit. That it's that type of thing. We're all in the Truman Show. <laughs> like so you guys are in a group together. But you found each other, and all the people making movies about your individual lives are in on this together. Wouldn't, that, be, wouldn't that make our podcast like Inception? Kind of. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Whoa. Yeah, I blew my own mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was, that was a movie that I watched, but uh, uh, I, I digress, because I want to talk about a movie that Ryan watched last week. And it was a movie that uh, uh, Tiny and I were flipping through some channels and we saw it. And we're like, the fuck is this? And uh, the good news is Ryan watched it. So Ryan, why don't you give us a little uh, movie review? So I watched Sam Elliott's new movie, uh, The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. <laughs> 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 and it was wonderful. Uh, <laughs> first of all, they don't even say the word Bigfoot until like 40 minutes into the movie. And then once they see him, the first quote that Sam... And what bothers me is, like, everyone in the movie that he says, oh, I'm going to go kill Bigfoot, they all look at him straight face like, sure, it's Tuesday. We can go kill Bigfoot. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll get my gun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then the first thing he says when he... It's like 10 seconds after he decides, I'm going to go kill Bigfoot. He shoots him in the head and then chases him through the woods... Bigfoot doesn't die? No. He got shot in the head with a rifle, and he doesn't die. And the first thing that Sam Elliott says was, he doesn't even have big feet. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't even live up to the name. They should have just yeah. said Sasquatch or something. Or... Well, and then the Bigfoot is, he chases him through the woods, finds him on this rock, is making him a Viking-style pyre, and he's saying, they're not going to get your body, big guy. That's a direct quote. So he murdered him, and then he's going to send him off in honor. Yeah, and then as he goes to light it on fire, and Bigfoot engulfs, like, the whatever he's in, engulfs on fire, he Bigfoot jumps up and, like, bites 
Sam Elliott in the face. And does it like in his ear Bigfoot or something? Then? Right? <laughs> is it? Is well, there going to be a sequel? Oh, and the reason why... And then becomes Bigfoot. Kills it. <laughs> he becomes a <laughs> kills Hitler, Kills Bigfoot and then becomes Bigfoot. Well, the reason why they sent Samuel L. Jackson is because apparently... They Samuel, Sam, Samuel L. Oh, yeah, that'd be even better. <laughs> Sam Elliott. Sam Sam Bigfoot's on a plane. So Big tired Bigfoot. of these old yeah. motherfucking Bigfoot's on a plane. Don't you try to motherfucking knock me on fire? <laughs> So they send uh, Sam Elliott after Bigfoot because he's the only one that's immune to these squatch pox or whatever is killing Canada. Was it Bigfoot VD or something like that? Basically. But it looks like he has mange because he's got like 11 hairs all over his whole body. Yeah, I wouldn't sleep with a mange Bigfoot without a condom. That's, no. that's good advice, bro. Right? It is. Write that down. Again, right. But yeah, he... I just... It's horrible. The whole movie is horrible. So Sam... Elliot doesn't die when he's bit in the face by a Bigfoot. No, but he does fake his own death for whatever reason. Well, I, just, I just spoiled the whole movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. <laughs> I don't think anyone else here is going to watch it. I think we're, <laughs> no, we're, I think we're safe now. We got, we, now we know how it is. Because really, like, we watched this thing. We watched the trailer. And I think we were both kind of drop jaw watching it going, is it real? Because, first of all, Sam Elliott's in it. Yeah. Ron Livingston is in it, who's he's a respectable actor. I mean, for, like, two minutes. Oh, that's that. it? Yeah, but I love Sam Elliott, and that's the only reason why I watched the movie. So you kind of think like something like that? Did it have cult status? Something like Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Killer, Vampire Hunter? Yeah, I mean, Hunter. So oh, sorry. Wow. I mean, is it going to be worth watching? Can I go out and buy the DVD hairs. for five dollars and make it worth it? I would not do that. <laughs> But was it? Was there any comedic value? Was there any cult value? Or did they shoot this thing like it's a legitimate film? Yeah, it looked like it was supposed to be legitimate. So they spent a lot of money making this shitty film. Oh, absolutely! It's like they built. They they spent all this money, and then they were like, "Oh shit, we forgot a Bigfoot." Well, and uh, it's it's on the title. It was an afterthought. They made a movie about the guy who killed Hitler. Oh shit! This is way too short. Um, And then Bigfoot. It's the Bigfoot. Oh right. But, I mean, there was like nine hairs all over, maybe nine hairs on the whole Bigfoot. And he didn't have big feet? What size, what size shoe do you think he was wearing? Like an eight. Really? Yeah. How tall was he? Smaller than Samuel, or Sam Elliott. Wait, was he what? smaller than Sam Elliott? He was shorter than Sam Elliott. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. Oh, he, so was oh I forgot to tell you the best part. Oh, yeah. here we go. He was doing like, if you ever watch WWE... Like, that's the kind of wrestling moves they were doing. I, Sam Elliott got suplexed. <laughs> Pile driver! By, by the Bigfoot. By the Bigfoot. <laughs> the Bigfoot. Yeah. Oh, and then when Sam Elliott stabbed him like seven times, Bigfoot didn't do anything but vomit all over his face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He just, Bigfoot jumps out and goes, What are you going to do when these 22 inch pythons come <laughs> coming down? Crashing your Bigfoot style! Yeah. He's Brother. slapping him. Yeah. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was great. <laughs> and then they all snapped into a slim chip. <laughs> yeah, I think Bigfoot was uh, this macho man and Bigfoot ate the slim chips, isn't it? Oh my god! So, I, so they had it right the whole time. Maybe that was authentically Big Bigfoot in the eighties. I I work in branding, and I would say that that's a terrible title. But it does make it sparks interest because the title is so crazy. All right, but, but we watched. What was the? Do we remember what the Bigfoot? show that you and I watched what that was called uh, Abominable Abominable and it was about a Bigfoot that was killing uh, oh, cl- clearly it had a, uh, one room that had girls that were um, sorority girls sorority girls <laughs> and then you, another guy in a wheelchair that had to watch it was kind of like it was kind of like uh, Rear Window mm-hmm. but with Bigfoot that's kind of what it was except really shitty <laughs> like extra shitty so yeah we watched that one but uh yeah, that's cool. So don't watch that movie is what you're saying. So I'm saying so. Uh, watch the flat one. Don't watch the one movie. about Hitler and the yeah. Bigfoot. Uh, by the way, what year was it supposed to take place? Because Sam Elliott, if he killed Hitler, he would be like 90. Well, that isn't Sam Elliott like 90 years old? No. <laughs> he's, he's, come on, he's 70s, right? He's not old enough to have been in World War II. He's, he's Vietnam age. No, they should have done that backwards. They should have went, and Sam Elliott should have recruited Bigfoot to kill Hitler. I would watch that movie. I wouldn't. What? <laughs> nah, it's stupid. No, I can't do Oh, real quick. Are you, are you guys watching uh, Umbrella Academy? I know Tanya is. Are you guys watching Umbrella Academy? Umbrella on Academy. Ne- on Netflix? Oh, no, it's, it's You think it's good? 
Yeah. Do you yeah. not like it? I got to like the first three episodes, and I'm like, why am I watching this? Wow. Well, hmm. well, I we like it. I it's like so the good. Punisher though. That was a good one. I didn't watch it. Whoa! My TV just turned on, and that's Ghosts on its own. Yeah. <laughs> that is Ghosts. My TV just turned on. Let me turn that off. Uh, okay, so uh, here we go. So now that was part one. Like Should have asked the question. <laughs> TV. Yeah, yeah. It came up on search. That would have been like really, start spelling yeah, things you out. An opportunity there. It wants us to watch the movie. It yeah. did. It really did. Uh, I think it was just on. I will have to admit, my TV may have just been on, and somehow the Roku just said, "Hey, what's up, guys?" Um, so let's talk about. So we've got some story stuff we're going to talk about. This is now stuff of the news. Stuff of the news. Paranormal in the news. Who wants to go first? I want to know what you're going to tell me. All right, I'm going to tell you my story first. Uh, so this is real. This is stuff. This is real. Do you guys know who Jose Canseco is? He was a baseball player. So Jose Canseco was a uh, baseball player. Played for the Oakland Athletics. Um, bit of an asshole. Steroid use. Not shocked. But he was the guy that came out and said, "I did steroids." Like he admitted it. That sounds I really I'm totally going to hear you eat that sandwich. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> I'm just, like, yeah, just, just hear it. Just like eating a sandwich. I'm it's, the eat part of this podcast. I know, but, <laughs> my, my, but that's a really good sandwich. Isn't it? Be jealous. Oh, well, well. It's a really good sandwich. Okay, so Jose Canseco. He, um, he was a bit of an asshole. Played for the Oakland, Oakland Athletics during the scandal of um, uh, all the steroid scandal. He was the one guy that goes... Oh yeah, no, no, I, 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 I did steroids, and he started name dropping. So people look at that as, as a bit, bit of legitimacy behind him, meaning, hey, he's a truth teller. No, he's just kind of a rat, and he knew he was going to get busted. Like, there's no way you were going to look at Jose Canseco and go, I wonder if he did steroids. No, he did steroids. Yeah, but he there's no way. Guns, I mean. So here's the thing: Did you know? <laughs> Speaking of Bigfoot, for right now, for five thousand dollars. If you pay Jose Canseco five thousand dollars, he will guarantee you that he will take you to an alien and Bigfoot. To an alien and Bigfoot? Yeah. Well, is like, it, does he do steroids together? Are they the same? Is this like with the time in the fair when I paid five dollars to see some <laughs> giant pig and it was a mirror? Yeah. <laughs> it was somebody's uncle. So here's here's his tweet. He, this is a tweet, and there's more to, involved in the story. But uh, I want, th- this is legitimate. This is legitimate, hundred percent. This is his tweet. I'm reading his tweet right now. It says, "Come spend the day with me and my alien buddies. I'll show you Bigfoot and a real alien." Call Morgan seven zero two three seven four three seven three five. You should call. That number again is I know you should. I would. Morgan? I want you to call. It's uh, yeah. It's a it's a Vegas number seven zero two three seven four three seven three five. There you go. It's in Vegas. Can so it is. In Vegas. You're not supposed to talk about that stuff once you leave. So he. True. I mean, first of all. Oh, by the way. So during this time, let me just tell you, he claims that they can take your brain. This is what the aliens are doing. They're taking your brain, and they are putting it forward ahead of time. And he said that he did it, and when he did it, that um, he knew the Super Bowl score. Who was going to win the Super Bowl? Maybe that's why he was... But he was proven wrong. He didn't know it. So he was wrong. (laughs) So he went ahead. So the aliens have the ability to take you into the future... But not really, because they messed up. But, but that's it. But that's it. And he says that the aliens have can take you forward in time. I can, I think we should. Can we call him and like? Do you want to call him? Do yeah, call I mean, right it's, it's only going to be five thousand dollars. I'm down. Oh my god, that we was, can probably. It's worth it. Just to maybe we can just have a Kickstarter. Well, if it's right aliens, we, they could have taken him to an alternate universe, where in that universe that was the score. That is true. If all five of our listeners could pitch in a thousand dollars, it's only a thousand dollars for the price of a cup of coffee. Yeah, you could buy a cup of coffee. Right. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, maybe, Jose Canseco. Maybe the guy that's is crazy. So and and if you talk about a level of insanity. That's a huge level of insanity right now. Like, yeah. You know, it's. These these stars these these are athletes are heroes, and they retire in their thirties, and then they, and then they sit around and they're like, now what? And I think I wonder if the insanity comes in. I mean, look at OJ and OJ. Ugh, don't even get started on that. You're talking about killing your legacy. That guy had one of the best legacies ever. 
They yeah. then went and murdered somebody. Uh, so anyway, they're, they're Jose Canseco, making... if anybody out there, listen, if anybody out there knows anything more about this, I, I really want some info if anybody's done it. Uh, reach out to us. Our number again is, we'll just reach out to us. You'll find a way. But uh, <laughs> if anybody wants to call that number, I'm going to say that number one more time if you want to call Morgan. The number is um, 702-374-3735. And ask for Morgan. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's like, it, it, uh, part of the article says, one has to feel bad for Morgan is that phone number must be inundated with people desperate to bask in Kaseko's glory. Let's face it. What could possibly be better than spending the day with Kaseko, a genuine, authentic space alien, and getting Zeke Bigfoot? Is it possible to put the price tag on that type of experience? And that is true. I would pay $5,000 if, if I could do that. Is he splitting it with Bigfoot and the alien, you think? Yeah, I wonder what their thing is. Like, how do you guarantee, hey, Bigfoot, what are, you, are you free this Tuesday? I got a new client. Yeah. Like, and it's in Vegas. How yeah. many Vegas that's, Bigfoot sightings have there been? That's the scary part to me. I'll tell you what. I got. Well, maybe he's taking them to, like, Area 51 or something. I Do you think there's a Bigfoot in Area 51? I don't know. I've never been there. Well, you think he's an alien. Hiding. You oh, think well, then Bigfoot might be well, in well, there would be aliens in Area 51, not necessarily Bigfoot. But well, they could be in different areas. You suspect. You have brought it up. Oh, I was, it's just a theory that's out there. You know, it's also saying that Jesus was an alien. Have you heard that theory? Oh, I have a, you want to hear a theory? Yeah. You want to hear the theory that I just I just heard? Holy shit, I'm not talking to any of you guys about this. You ready? Yeah. Sorry, I'm totally just like stealing the podcast. And I swear to God, I'll let you guys talk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember the Berenstein Bears? Oh, yeah. You're talking about the Mandala effect. Yes! You know this. Yeah. Do you guys know this? You know it? Yeah. Have you, didn't you? Tom, do you know it? No, fill me in. Oh, go for it. Ryan, you do it. You tell it. The Mandala effect is the whole theory is about that there's alternate universes and we're currently living in one. Um, and the way that people are proving this is things that they considered to be information like the Bernstein Bears or the fact that people say that Mandala died in the 80s, right? Right? It's one of those things where people believe one thing and other people believe other things and <laughs> the truth is somewhere in the middle. Like... Was it Shaq playing a genie in a movie? Shazam. Shazam. Or, or was it, uh, what was the other guy's name? Sinbad. Sinbad, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was Sinbad. No, I, it, was, it was Shaq. It was Shaq. I remember seeing that. But, so, but the, the Berenstein <laughs> Bears. I remember it being is, the Berenstein Bears. It's not. It's the Berenstain. S-T-A-I-N. Berenstain Bears. And anybody that's ever confronted with that said, well, no, it was the Berenstein when I grew up. Like, people just swore it was that. Well, and well, it's also there's, is it sex in the city or sex and the city? Yeah. That's sex and the city. Or more That's importantly, just, the oh Anthony Hopkins, when he said, hello, Curly, Curly, blah, blah. Hello, Clarice. Thank you. And oh, Science of the Lambs. And Science of the Lambs. And then he's even Holy said Holy cow, how's that close is that? Where is that? A helicopter. We're talking about stuff we shouldn't be. <laughs> <They're listening. laughs> oh my god, Bigfoot's in the chopper. <laughs> it's a ho- with Jose Canseco. Oh my god, it's Jose Canseco. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, close. Even he I said like, that made, it made it vibrate. It made the fifth floor vibrate. All right, go ahead. No, he even said that he said that in the movie, and then apparently it's not in the movie. Hello, Clarice. Yeah, it's not. Hello, yeah. Clarice. That's what everybody says. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe is Anthony Hopkins still- is just losing it by now. Am I still, is a helicopter still up there? Yeah, we still here. What is it doing? Hovering, Hovering right it's outside fine. of our window. <laughs> Son of a gun, there's really like Bigfoot in a helicopter out there. Well, it's like, Luke, I am your father is not a line in the movie. Yeah. What, what was the... But, oh, every, uh, but everyone remembers it. Another one is I played again, Sam. Oh, that's right. It's not I don't know that one. That's from, from Casablanca. Casablanca. But, but the Berenstain Bear one is great. Why? That really is a... Am I still hearing it? Helicopter? Your feedback too, though. Yeah, it's still there. I wonder what it's doing. Why is it hovering here? I don't know. Aliens. All right, so anyway, the Berenstein Bears, the Berenstein Bears, did anybody ever confront them and say, you know, it was Berenstein? And they go, no, it was Berenstein when I grew up. Mm-hmm. So that's all that, that whole thing, so. All right, so anyway, with that, Tom. Yeah. I'm done. I'm, t- I'm, I'm not going to hijack this anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it over to you. Uh, so let's hear, let's hear your story. You've got a, a story to tell. Well, I was looking around and found uh, an interesting scientist 
recently there was news all over last year in the middle of the year saying that he had invented technology to visualize multi-dimensional beings and so apparently he has invented <coughs> through um, mathematical equations and uh, optical let's see optical experiments that's about all it's going to tell me here ways to take pictures of multi-dimensional beings using television I don't know I think they, he takes apart televisions puts together different kind of antennas and then catches something he calls catches something he calls these uh, it Images. If, if you guys want to look at these, they look like demonic faces that are completely symmetrical. They're just electronic interference. I so, think. But everybody touts this stuff. It's all over the internet. Everybody looks at the validity of this. And I wonder why this got so. So, wait, how is he doing this? How is he taking pictures? He's taking pictures how? Well, this is the important part. He can only release all of his findings to Facebook because nobody else will believe him. <laughs> and believe it or not, he's put a thousand photos on Facebook that show all of his work, but he won't let any scientific community look at his equipment or tell anything about his. Can we go to his Facebook? Check it out. I don't think he has a Facebook. Anymore. Well, then how is he doing yeah. this? That, that well, is how did you magical. find the article and the pictures? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's all over every single paranormal outlet, which is why I'm wondering why everybody covers this stuff. And his name is Daniel Neems. What is the reception like when people see it? Are they just like, oh yeah, that's a ghost? Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, what do you think, Bill? Have you seen these? I'm going to grab my laptop and pull it up. Excuse me One please. of them looks like it might be a demon, but they are all... Okay, like so it. these are just... I mean, clearly, here's, here's the thing. They're electronic interference on but, the television but it's, screen. But it's just basically cut in half. It's like... Well, some of them look legitimate. Well, there's, well yeah, no, there's but they're... Oh, your phone. I don't know what's going on with your phone. No, I just broke your phone. 15 years old. But, yeah, it is. Your phone's... But essentially, it's kind of like a... Uh, it's it just an image. It's, it's copy. It's just well, like split in half. It's, yeah, it looks like one well, of those yeah, Rorschach yeah, images. Yeah, it's a Rorschach, essentially, is what it is. So It is a Rorschach image. That's exactly what it is. Well, then there's some that look like the, the posters that you'd get at any New Age shop that's pixelated. True. So, I don't know. I didn't find anything interesting. In the world of aliens today, I know that some of the most prominent people, respected people, said that 2019 should be a, a busy year. But so far, I think that MUFON is... What was, what, was, what was his name again? I'm just trying to oh, yeah, see if I can find some info up. on him. Let's see. Our I producer, Tony, is closer to the Names. Well, let's see. My phone is terrible. Why is 2019 going to be a big year for paranormal? Is it? No, he's talking about aliens. Oh, aliens. Why aliens? Why 2019? Because Fifi. Yes. Trump. It's Donald Trump. <laughs> he wants to build a wall. Yeah. <laughs> Space Force. Make Mars pay for it. Oh, nice. My phone is being terrible. Neems, I can't get this guy's first name. David, is that right? I think it was David. Was it Neems. David Neems? David Neems. David Neems. Uh, David. David, hey, if you're out there, reach out to us. In, yeah. Uh, well, apparently he was N -E raised in Spain and Tom. now is located in Colombia. Tom, how do you spell that name? N E M E S. Neems. 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 Nems. All right. Well, Ryan. Yeah, so... You, look something up. you got something for us. I do. So this happened a couple of years ago, but there is a group of people um, that are calling themselves an occult and paranormal museum, and the owner, Greg Newkirk, has decided to be a good idea to collect haunted objects and then try to 3D scan and print them. And I was watching this video where they were trying to scan what looks like a tiki god from Pier 1 and that they've nicknamed Billy and saying that it was haunted and that they were going to 3D print it and were having issues 3D printing it. And now that they've done this, they wanted to give everyone a copy of this hexed or cursed object, a haunted object, excuse me. And in the video, they're trying to coax the spirit of Billy to allow them to 3D print it. And the lady that's involved says, we just want to introduce you to a bunch of new people. We now, want you to make new friends. We want you to make new friends. <laughs> now, this haunted object is supposedly 
makes you have nightmares and have bad things happen to you, they want to introduce the new people. <laughs> so, and then the first thing that popped in my mind was multiplicity, where the people, the guy made a clone of himself, and then the clone made a clone, and the clone made a clone, and at the end, the whole... <laughs> <laughs> if, the last one's pretty dumb. Yeah, the last one is like <laughs> slobbering on demon. himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Making deals with anybody. Just to make his own tongue. <laughs> There's an old um, uh, internet cartoon called like The House of Cosby or something where this guy just kept cloning Bill Cosby's. Oh, no. But every eighth one is like really just dumb. And then so they start looking like they're really smart. And every eighth one is just like... So roo- putting roofies in his own drink. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is when he was still irrespectful. Individual. Oh yeah. What? Just a anyway. Time. So okay. So quick, quick, quick question. Sorry, I'm eating a fire right now because I eat in our podcast. What is up with? Can you think you can 3D? Uh, you're gonna well, pass the. Yeah, let's just say it is haunted. Let's just say it's true, and that thing was. Which, by the way, you showed me the video. I was a little fascinated with the fact that they couldn't print the face. It looked like as they tried to do this. Something was blocking. It looked like there was a entity or something blocking the face, like around something. Okay, here like it was the scanning equipment. No, no, no. It still was. This, I've never scanned. Big, like, oh, great, scan a bowling pin and show, show see if it has the same issue. Like, I don't know. But the, I thought that was fascinating. This, the issue that I have is if this item is haunted, how did it become haunted in the first place? Was it connected to it? Does it have some sort of affinity for it? Right, or was it some backstory behind it? Or was it something like a voodoo fetish or another type of kachina, which is a spirit doll, where it actually became a home for this entity? And then what happens now is you're printing multiple items of this of this statue. Does he have multiple summer homes? I mean, I don't understand <laughs> what happens. Does he just travel from piece to piece or... Uh, it just I just feel like I had more questions at the end than answers. I smell like we're missing out on a market here. I think that we should start selling like a subscription to a demo <laughs> to, well, to, to be able to print out plans. We have plans you can print out your own haunted little items. We can yeah. all sorts yeah. of different things. Yeah. Because it's true, you could sell the schematics for it. And the other thing is if that's really a thing I mean we know that people on the internet on eBay sell like ghost in a jar. Yeah, or like, those haunted Dybbuk boxes, which is like the <laughs> the worst case. Yeah, explain those part of that jar. So the Dybbuk is a what they called a severed soul in the Jewish tradition, and typically these souls or these these spirits, if you would say, cause extreme havoc. Um, and the only way that they can essentially be satiated is by having a box made for them basically that it has a bunch of items in it to hold the spirit or the soul at bay but people are claiming this guy on ebay the one that i saw he went some to some sale and this guy had hundreds of them in his garage and he decided you know what i'm going to take all these divics home and and sell them to people on ebay so i just think it's a it's a joke okay so when you buy it are you buying someone's soul or are you or are you buying one that if a soul came up to you you're like I right, here get in the box what's no. in the box what's in the box what they're claiming is that the entity is already in the box and it's all being held together by red and white and black wax or whatever not all of them are the same and so I, you're buying a soul you're tormenting a soul essentially well you're buying a soul and keeping it locked up in your house Oh, you're buying a tormented soul. Well, if you're going to ship your anything. Because who else isn't? I mean, <laughs> if you're going to ship anything. For 29 99 you can give UPS. yourself a friend. Yeah. Want to play Battleship? Oh! <laughs> oh, he's a oh, B6. Later, I'll see <laughs> you know, all you do is bitch. <laughs> well, that's the funny Like You have EVPs of your demon in a box playing Battleship with you. <laughs> e <E-nine. laughs> <No>. Hit! <laughs> <laughs> no. It would be nice to be able to have a ghost box and have those kind of real-time conversations with my entity friend, but I have to rely on the old-fashioned, you know, and then i got to push that thing around and let the... <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> uh, let the board talk to me. The Ouija board's got to tell me everything that my ghost friends tell me. So it takes 30 minutes to have a conversation. So what's really funny is I downloaded a ghost app on my phone. Oh, right? I did Thank that before you. too. Yeah, but this one apparently tells me what kind of spirit is there. 
and if it's a friend or not or how old it is and apparently there's this app called ghost observer that you can actually have it translate what the ghost is telling you for a mere two ninety nine. Oh, oh okay that's so a deal it is we did uh, I, about like three years ago I downloaded one when we were shooting ghost documentary just for fun to see what it did and it kept go, ghost just kept walking up to me during this time like in the, the Pokemon game no, no, no. Can you yeah. capture them? <laughs> Everybody looks like Pikachu. Um, no, like a ghost. It's just a radar. It looks like a, a radar. Like this? Oh, what do you, what do we, are there ghosts here right now? Well, well, that's what right. Oh, they want me to raid it. No, not right now. Well, let us know. Leave no, it first. Don't rate this ghost. First and then I'll it. So I'll leave it on. Okay. Well, let's see if a ghost. Ghost? Oh, think? there's one right by you. Oh, He's right. a vengeful spirit. Right here? Oh, He's nice 49. job, Tanya. Right He's 49. Yeah. It really tells you about him. Maybe it's Hank. No, that's just a picture of Bill. Yeah, it's <laughs> Wait, listen to the communication. Yeah. Oh, it's just me. It's telling me that there's communication, but... Wait, within ten seconds, it's picked up a spirit. It's identified its age. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to... Listen, I need you to be a favor, though. Oh, did you hear that? What? I don't know. I think he said go away. I think he's saying that... I want you to read the reviews over that. I think he's saying bacon. Bill's got some bacon from his sandwich. <laughs> yeah. and... What's, what's the name of that app? I'm going to read the reviews. Margarine. Yeah, that's um, it. Ghost Observer? If I were dead, I'd be missing bacon. Oh, me too. And then there's another one on here that I can't find on my phone. Oh, there's Real Ghost Detector. I'm going to not connect to Wi-Fi. And I'm going to see if the same ghost is around you. Okay, what was the, what was the ghost one again that you just... Told me to? Ghost Observer. Ghost Observer. Still there? The news. Ooh, nope, this one doesn't like you. Yeah. You know, oh I pulled up, we pulled up Daniel Neem. Seriously, this here. one's got a four out of five stars. Four out of five, 4.2. Well, read the and comments. Have, the comments are wonderful. This is going to be great. Here we go. Uh, this is the, the very first review, the top review a year ago. Oh, my God. I'm so creeped out. I would have to say this is fake, but weird things have been happening. I've been seeing signs that ghosts are with me, so I decided to get the app. Creeped, comma. But it, but it was really so doubting. But it was really so doubting. This app. Apparently, I was wrong for doing it. Oh my god, it's so long. I can't read the whole thing. Uh, she found out that she has four friendly ghosts. I believe it. Uh, and one famous person. She has a famous person as one of the. Oh my god, who is it? Obviously, oh, one who passed one. away. Oh, that. Thanks for clearing it up. We got one. That the ghost oh, is the one. Ghost. We do. Is it Honey Bill's computer? I don't know. It this was... this is real. Somebody really thinks, and, the, and by the way, uh, the, this girl's name, uh, her uh, username is Husky Girl Two Thousand. Well, you know she's honest. Yeah, and like <laughs> maybe, or maybe she likes dogs, you jackasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a jerk about that. Um, Hold on. Here's one that says, "I found my dead best friend," and this gave five stars. Guys, I have gotten out of a met. Oh, this is... That no, I'm not kidding. This is very perfect. Really sad. Don't read it. Says, guys, I may have gotten out of a mental institution, but I'm not crazy. A few years ago, I met someone named Brian at the mental institution I went to for various reasons. Thanks for... For that. various for reasons. Um, <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. Uh, Don't his eyes would look deep into my soul as if he was in a second place. He smiled and inspired me to pursue my passion of ventriloqui- ventriloquism. Oh, my God. Well, listen to this, though. Okay. This one was by Tom... Oh, the ghost? Yeah. We found a ghost. And the description was, have high energy, they are communicative and neutral, and you may have met them or knew them before. You oh, may shit. have known them. Uh, who, who you been talking to, ghost? <laughs> so, I gotta read, this is the headline for the, the third review on here. My weapon is a spatula. That's really what it says, and it gave it a five out of five stars. <laughs> uh, I'll smack him. Uh, I was being chased by a ghost. It was a friendly one. And Why are you being chased? And then? it ran in a hurry until I reopened this app, and it was behind me. I pulled out a spatula, and the demon. I, it was the de- I pulled a spatula to the demon and threatened it, but it came closer, and I started whacking it with my spatula, and it went flying out of my hand. No one was in the house. I was getting whacked by the app. It told me to run to the police. Oh my god, did the app really tell them that? Wait a second. These are long, but these are long. I'm not going to read all these. He was whacking somebody with a spatula. The spatula was flying out of his hand. Then the app whacked him (laughs) with the spatula. Oh, this is great. This is great. I wanted to call the Ghostbusters, but they're fake. Every time I called them, they have came. 
Well, listen to this. this I just opened a up a new information report on the same ghost. It has the strongest energy, usually indication of a human spirit, may represent love and healing, but could also be evil, very evil. Hmm. It could be good, but also... It could also be really bad. It bad. could be good, but it's sucking all of my energy, because it went from low to higher. We'll just hit it with a spatula. I am yeah. good. Yeah. spatula, Bill. Oh, uh, this one, oh, uh, horse girl. Across the room. Horse girl with a bunch of ones after her name. She goes, uh, it says creepy mm-hmm. AF. Oh, if you're like that's what the kids. Creepy I'm, and I'm, fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I felt, I felt an off feeling in my room, and I had it for a while, and then I used this app, and it showed me there was a person in the corner of my room. It was a tall man with horns, and to be honest, I think it was a demon. But it's odd that it was in my home, since my family believes in God. Yeah, that's so super uh, odd. But. And then she goes, but this, by the way, this is one long sentence. Uh, but for that demon to be there, I couldn't sleep for weeks, and I heard, H-E-R-D, sounds of someone walking, and that thing said, free us. That's what creeped me out. So the more you like giving yourself nightmares, use this app. By the way, that was one long sentence. That was one whole giant long sentence. Is my sandwich haunted? I mean, it is a dead animal. Oh, wait. There's two. I have an issue. There's two. Uh, hold I, I, I'm in awe how many people on this app that you're doing right now think it's real. Scary save my life. This is this is creepy. I'm, I'm just very entertaining. Ghost Observer. And then somebody goes weird. One out of five. Oh, let's read a bad review. You ready? This is one out of five. I'm going to read what a bad review was. Are used to joke around saying there was ghosts in my mirror, so I wanted to make sure that there wasn't one. Oh, this is one long sentence again. But when I opened the app, it used my room. There was a vengeful spirit. I was 26 years old, right next to me, my mirror. So I got scared. This one's 244 years old. Did you know that? Because you apparently keep aging after you die. Uh, (laughs) Oh, my God. This is like somebody's... Actually, this is the one person that gave that a one out of five because they're mad because it showed them there was a spirit in their house. There was I'm a demon out. in there. I'm mad because you showed me the truth. Which, by the way, which I, I say truth. Truth. And, and here's one that says, by the way, so here's another one out of five, and it says doesn't work. I don't know if it's because I have an iPod touch, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it's a fucking fake app. But they're like, I don't know. It might be well, the iPod right? touch is the, the most prominent thing used by exorcists. Did you know that? My friends have ghosts, and I don't. <laughs> No ghost showed up. This is so mad. It doesn't work. There's no ghost here. Heaven forbid that there was just no ghost or that it's not real. Um, but the same goes with my sister's iPod Touch. My mom got it for got her iPhone 8, and it worked fine. It's the equipment. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to use this app, don't use an iPhone. iPad. An iPad. All right. Touch. So, if you're going to go searching for ghosts, make sure that your phone shows you them in your house before you go anywhere else searching for ghosts because they are guaranteed to find them. This this thing, and by the way, did you have to pay for it? Was this a... a if you wanted to translate your EVPs, you do, but... Uh, so it's just like, and you're like, oh, what did that say? And it's like, where's the margarine? That's, well, that's what it said. That's what it thing. said. Um, After lives matter. Well, okay, obviously he said, so I am hungry. This, I'm dumbfounded. By this stupid thing. So this is called, uh, there's an app called Ghost Observer, and it says AR detector, which is what? Alternate reality? What's AR? <coughs> well, it's it augmented. Be. Augmented. There you go. Oh, nice job. Nice job, Tanya. Thanks. Um, cool. All right. Well, I'm, I don't even know. Like the one that I, the one that I came up before, it was the, um, it was also doing where it would drop words, and it'd be like, Car and you're like, oh, it just said car. Like, did what? you hit my car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it would you, you it just spins. It was like a little radar, like you just see like in a submarine or something, like submarine movies or something. Like, just give you a ping. Oh, and, then and then it would be like, bing. You're like, oh, there's a ghost right there, three, uh, he- three feet ahead of me. Because <laughs> they just walk all freely through whatever. Five clicks over the mountain. Uh-oh. I'm yeah. This is. I, I'm in a whole nother realm in my brain right now reading these reviews because I'm really dumbfounded to the people that, like, you could, we really could. We could just clone anything and say it's haunted something. We'd probably sell a billion of them. Like, would this would be, be a really good experiment. It's just to find something to say is haunted, like the ghost in the bottle. Well, I've got several things that are supposedly haunted. That what I do you have? Talk, what, do we, what do you have that's haunted? You um, do have haunted items. I do. And explain, and 
T- tell us about some of those, and then tell us what you think or experiences you've had with them. Go. So, well, I was doing an investigation at a house here locally, and they were talking about all the creepy things that were going on in their house. And when they went down into the crawl space, they found a completely clean vintage porcelain doll. So they assumed that the doll was what was causing all the issues and they were going to get rid of it. I took it home uh, because it makes the most sense. And nothing ever happened. That's just one example of the kind of things that you come across. People find something out of place, they assume that's what's causing it, and they get rid of it and all their stuff stops. So, yeah, but is that coincidental? Or is it most causation? Likely. Or is it just projection that they just think something's happening? It's well, if like they're experiencing things that are weird and not putting logic into it, and they find something out of place, they're going to put one and one together. Well, and how much of that is, I mean, how long have they lived there? Has that been told to them before? Well, right. Did somebody say, hey, before you move into that house, I heard Check something. the crawl space. Right. <laughs> Guess what? Wait, wait, wait. Well, I know someone's got a 3D printer if you want to do this. We can really get it done. Yeah, if you want your own haunted item, get a hold of us and we'll make it for you. Right what do you have, what's your most haunted item? We'll smear yeah. that juju all over. Um, most haunted item? Well, the one that probably would have the most occurrence is there was a guy who owned an old house who a woman was supposedly killed in. And the item that they tried to kill her for was all of her jewelry. And apparently the jewelry's from her that she was wearing when she died. Uh, he was related to her and didn't want it because of the connotation behind it, so he's given me the ring. So he's giving it to you? He did. He gave it oh, to me. Oh, you have it. So have you had any experiences with this ring? Nope. That's what I'm saying. There's, I have any of the haunted objects that I've had, I haven't had any reaction to whatsoever. So I know we talked about doing this, but we just need to unbox. We need to get some... Order some haunted stuff, unbox it, and then hide it around your apartment and see what happens. <laughs> and then you know, we should, and then give it away like at a white elephant. Or, <laughs> oh, that'd be or great. And then, and then follow, and then it. film like when they, when they get murdered, you're like, ha ha ha, it worked. Well, that's Sorry. the thing. If we have somebody listening and you have something you want us to open up, send it to us. I mean, like, wait, that sounds terrible. I mean, we have to have the NSA look at it first or something. Well, no, but that'd be really fun. <laughs> yeah, it would be. I mean, honestly, if you have something you think is funky. We could always draw straws to see who takes it home. Oh, I would take it home. Yeah, yeah so I would, I'd sleep with it. I'd put it around my nightstand. Ryan and I have already had something happen between the two of us in two different places. So we lived in apartments that were, I mean, near each other in two different buildings. Mm-hmm. And uh, randomly, and this was this was really quite random, he only lived there about a month, and I'd been living there over a year, and I'd never had anything like this happen before. But all of my forks just started... Just randomly missing out of my out of my apartment. They weren't in my drawer. They weren't in the dishwasher. I was just kind of depleting. And then, just oddly, we went over there and we were moving stuff around in his bedroom. And there were like two or three of my fucking forks in his like upstairs apartment behind somewhere in his back bedroom. His kids hadn't had been around them. They had no idea they were there. It freaked us both out when we met. no. They're behind old mirrors. Yeah, behind the mirrors. Behind old mirrors. He had gotten a bunch of old mirrors that were all like 50 years old or something. We had stacked them all behind that dresser, and that's where they were, is behind the mirrors. You ever think that maybe Ryan is a kleptomaniac? I mean, like, they weren't even silver forks, but you, if you want them. Forks? Are good. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to get forked. All right. So if anybody has, or, or reach out to us if you have any sort of uh, haunted item that you want to tell us about. If somebody has a really good haunted, haunted item story, I would actually. <clears throat> yeah, or if it's very a, much. A ventriloquist dummy. They've got to be haunted. <laughs> They're well, just scary, though. They just look scary. We just need one for Bill's apartment if he thinks they're scary. Please send us one. <laughs> Man, I, yeah, I want to, again, I'm the skeptic in the room, so I'd love to... Well, we should order some one of those Dybbuk boxes off of eBay. Yeah. What happens if you open it? It's supposed to let it out. And then what? Ha- then they're free? Yeah. Or do they hang out with you? Well, they just... And, like, watch Netflix all day. Like, what do they do? <laughs> I, I guess it depends on the person that was inside the box to begin with. I would want to set them, and then if you set one free, do they just get to go like? Well, they're supposed to be bad. Oh, it's not like they're going to be like, "Hey, I'm going to go." Well, that's where hell. Then they they go to hell. This hell's like we're not taking. They're they're called dislocated spirits, so they're not happy. They're going to cause strife. So if you have a dipic box and a ghost box, is the ghost box only going to pick up what's in the dipic box, or can you like change the frequency and have two ghost friends sitting next to you on the couch? Well, the idea of the ghost box is it's supposed to help the entity communicate by allowing it to adjust the frequencies of 
the radio itself. Mm -hmm. It's not a ghost in a box versus a Dybbuk in a box. If you took a Dybbuk box and put it into a pain shaker, do you think it'd really piss that off? Well, they're already shipping them. <laughs> yeah. with, oh, I dropped you. I with, dropped your demon. <laughs> That's gonna. Piss I don't off. know. It might be like also just like getting exercise too. Like I've just been in this box all day long. Like. Cool. It's getting exercised. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what Dave and I have in common. We don't like to get exercised. Yeah. It could be, I don't know. Uh, how much is he selling those for? Those like twenty four ninety nine. Oh, that's a steal. Oh, that's, wow. that's a good yeah, price. Right. I was that. actually just looking Can we have them, them up, next week? Uh, to try and see how do you spell it? D-Y-B-B-U-K. Dybbuk box. Are you on uh, on the eBay? I'm going to just go to shopping. Oh, yeah, Google. yeah, you can look this up. Mainstream. Get um, on Google. Well, here's one on crap. Etsy. There's one for $200, Oof. 40 there's a, there's a question, Ryan. Why is it? What's I mean, the difference in quality uh, of your Dybbuk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a good I question. I mean, do you want a big Dybbuk? <laughs> or, or the size of your Dybbuk it's really matter? It's not the size of your Dybbuk. Yeah, it's just it's how it moves. Right? It's how aggressive the Dybbuk at your box is. Right. Yeah. It's really about the size it's of the, the box. It's not really the size of the Dybbuk. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, here's a haunted secret box as featured on YouTube. Must see. Check out video. Not doll. It's a five hundred dollar value for only two ninety nine ninety nine. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> we slashed the price on this, dude. Call now. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> it's our President's Day, dude. Box sale. Come on down. We're blowing them out. We're slicing <laughs> prices. You like ghosts? We got the most. Come on down. So I'm sick of listening to these guys already. What? No, oh. I was sitting behind him, talking to him. Oh, the oh. Dybbuk's. The Dybbuk's <laughs> sitting on the shelf, man. He's got way too many. <laughs> I've got inventory. <laughs> i got to close out. i got to get room. i got to get the new inventory, the 2019 stuff. i got 2018 boxes ready to go. Crazy Bill's Dybbuk's. <laughs> so the one on Etsy for Ooh. $200. Is it a handmade it's one? A, it's a low-level demon that was removed from a home during a home cleansing. So low- it's an amplifier demon. And they are not responsible Ooh. for any ill effects of this entity. Well, you gotta oh, be it. So low level and and what? what is it? So the that? idea of any monotheistic religion is that there is a hierarchy to power. God being the highest, and then you know you got the archangels and all the other angels and the demons. Well, the idea behind Lucifer when he went to hell, he took a bunch of demons with him, and he basically handed out. Jobs like anybody else. There's a hierarchy to those demons, right? So, a third of the hosts of heaven came with them through Christianity, and they're they're just going to be the same kind of like strength of angels on the other side, right? So, he found jobs for people. That's basically that's very admirable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they caught the sidekick in that divic box, not the actual. <laughs> well, he's an amplifier, I guess. <laughs> so, low level. What would that be on a, on a structure of say government level? Like, is he like? <laughs> Is he like a data Where? entry in kind of a basement of or somewhere? Is that would be growth. the same? Well, let, let's say, let's look at it through a, like an army standpoint. He would be like a private. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some training, but not enough to tell anybody what to do. What am I, I going to do with that demon? I got to tell him like how to scare people? Hey, a demon is still a demon, right? Can I'm going to ask a dumb question. Okay. When I die, can I become a demon, or do you have to become a demon another way? I think it depends on the religion that you're following, because the term demon is synonymous with evil spirit. So a lot of different religions believe that a person can become an evil spirit depending on the life that they lived or the things that they did upon their death. Did they have to, like, approach you? Is it like the mafia? Yeah. The Um, demon agenda? From what I was kind of taught... Uh, through religion growing up is that you don't become an angel or a demon because you are a human spirit. Well, right. But, yeah. But that's Christianity. Yeah. Right? But any other religions were, I'm sure, open to Well, I mean, <laughs> if you think of it this way, if you're going with Christianity, then ghosts and spirit are different. Mm-hmm. Right? Ghosts stem from the material realm, which is the realm that we can perceive with our material five senses. While spirit comes from a completely different place than altogether. You know, heaven, hell, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, from pre existence. Right. So right now, let's just say, can a, where does a demon come from? Let's just, just say normal. Somebody goes, Hey, there's a demon in my house. And you're like, Oh my god, there is a demon there. Was that demon once human form? 
wasn't born from two demon parents and had a demon baby. Well, see, <laughs> they're really that's a legitimate question. Like, I know if, you're using, theology, if you're using the term demon, most likely it's going to be connotation Christianity. with Christianity, right? right? So the idea from that is it doesn't come from earth, it comes from hell. It's, it's the host of heaven. So the whole idea of demons is like everything was in the host of heaven and there was nothing on earth and then Lucifer came and God cast out a third of those to heaven down to, and they followed Satan. So you have pretty much everybody. Well, they followed Lucifer. Lucifer Satan, right. Satan just means Satan. adversary. Right. So they followed Lucifer. And so essentially everything that these angels, that you can attribute to angels in heaven, they would have the same kind of powers on the opposite side. And so, I mean, that's where these demons were supposedly coming from in Christianity. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I just don't know. Like, like are they are they hiring? Like if I die and somebody goes, what do you want to do? I'm like, do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to hell? Do you want to stay and haunt a house? Do you want to be a poltergeist? Do you want to like I don't know? Like is it like a uh, like recruit like you joining the military? They're like oh, here's the job listings right now. Well, what that's my doing? question about that too. Because I mean, if you really have to split it down like that, then the whole premise is that these ones on heaven side want you to stay here and these ones on the hell side are pissed off that they got cast out and want you to be with them, right? So the whole idea of demons is they're trying to trick you or to get you to come be with them the whole time. So what the hell is a poltergeist just sitting around? Is that an entity? Is it a ghost? A poltergeist means noisy spirit or well, noisy yeah, ghost. Most, yeah, but I mean like it just in that classification of, rather than somebody who's just a demon, something that's obviously trying to cause Well, you just because someone knocks something over doesn't make them a demon. Right. My kids are demons and knock stuff over. Well, right, exactly. I haven't met your kids. You've got a cult with it, too. Yeah. But the idea, I like the idea of the poltergeist being more of a tulpa or a thought form, which is the, the energy of something that's been high level for so long that it has then created its own form. Tulpa is a Buddhist term. Thought form is more westernized. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Like the bell, the bell Witch. Or not Bell Witch, I'm sorry. The, um, Blair? Witch? No, it was the Bell Witch. Not the Blair Witch. Blair Witch was the movie. Yeah. The Bell Witch was um, a story about a, a little girl who was basically going through puberty and had a lot of stuff going on. She was being molested. And as a way to deal with her life that was being so tormented, she essentially created this energy. And this energy was protecting her, but it was it came in the form of very so, violent poltergeist activity. So essentially, your id manifests something else. Right. Got you. So, I pulled up the difference between ghosts, poltergeists, and demons. That will clarify which supernatural entities you should be terrified of. Ooh, this, hold on. This information. <laughs> yeah, and that's <laughs> the thing, too. Like, <laughs> just so, you read, United just States so, government. This is the very first one on there, so I've just clicked on it. It's on the internet, so it's true. It is. Abraham Lincoln said that. It was that. on Reddit, right? So uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sam Elliott said it. Yeah. So, you know, ghosts are just simply the spirits of people who have passed away that, that are just hanging out, can be seen, can sometimes talk. Living remnants. Poltergeists oh, um, have nothing to do with ghosts or spirits at all. Um, the best way to describe it is an active kinetic energy that causes physical disturbances. That can be known to literally bite, pinch, attack, harass humans, break things, throw things. So like a tulpa. Mm-hmm. Uh, demon. Uh, defined as an evil spirit or devil, especially one thought to possess a person or act as a tormentor in hell. And The only thing that I'd clarify there is a ghost is the disembodied energy of something that was once living in this realm. While spirit comes from, like we talked about early, the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it says ghosts are almost exclusively dead humans who passed across to the afterlife. Almost exclusively. Due Some of the ones to I met have not unresolved been. issues or violent death. Um, so so that mean, some of them are alive, or just some of them are <laughs> Some human. of them are still alive. My mom didn't love me, now I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I suddenly well, understand emo people. I don't think they hmm. meant exclusively dead. I think they meant exclusively dead humans. Well, what else would they be? Dogs dead and cats yeah. and like animals. I've got a ghost, I want a ghost dinosaur still though. I really want right? What, where's your ghost dinosaur answer from last week, Ryan? She answered it for me. Where? Yeah, look that up. Are there ghost dinosaurs? If so, they'd be coming everywhere. right they'd up. Just, they'd be everywhere. They would be, unless they didn't exist because the Earth is flat. Oh, that was one of the things they did talk about there. They said, one guy said, he said, 
uh, that they were planted by school teachers, I think he said. Did you also know that the flat earthers don't believe that Australia exists? I thought it was. Oh, I did hear that. Yeah. They did. How? I was watching this thing, this Aussie man reviews, he's hilarious, was talking about how flat earthers don't think that Australia exists because. It just doesn't fit when we flatten it out. Well, <laughs> it's too wrinkly. <laughs> yeah. No, what he was saying was. They say that the British, instead of shipping all their their convicts to Australia to start Australia, that they just drown them in the water and uh, Australia doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened. Yeah. They drove them onto a farm to go run free with other... Convicts? Your, uh, other convicts, yeah. Just yeah. like my dad did that with dogs all the time. <laughs> I, wonder if, they were found, I wonder if I find that farm one day and find all those dogs. My dad ah, ah, I have some ah, pets. Ah, here we go. Why are that movie, by the way? Did you see that? Why yeah, aren't awesome. there dinosaur ghosts? Here we go. There's actually a, a post. There is. Who's answering these questions? This is, is on. This, this is on Cora.com. This is by Jessica Storm. This was posted in June of 2016. Jessica Storm, how do you know these answers? <laughs> Her tippic oh. box told her. Basically, uh, a human ghost appears because of some kind of unfinished business that they have the need to communicate about. In the case of an animal, such as a dog, the ghost may try to communicate with the human because the human likely took care of the dog, or the dog would know some other human, or the dog were the dog had been abused. It has unfinished just not, business. Had, it needs to bite you. It needs to crap on the neighbor's yard one more time. Oh, the big one. A dinosaur if it had any unfinished business, wouldn't try to communicate with a human because it has no idea what a human is. So so if there are dinosaur ghosts, they don't know that they can... They're only talking to the other can... dinosaur ghosts. Yes. <laughs> That's her... the answer. <laughs> that is Wait, I, the I, answer. I, what's her name? Uh, Jessica Storm. Jessica Storm. You're a genius. The uh, unfinished well, business would be like... Isn't hey. it funny that her last name is Storm and they oh. were killed by comets? <laughs> What's that? I said, wasn't it funny that her name is Storm and it was, they, all the dinosaurs were killed by comets? Irony. <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. I just can see all these dinosaurs sitting around having conversations like, you know, these people just ignore us. Well, what they need to do is they need to make that real life Jurassic Park. <laughs> and then we need to prove if ghosts. <laughs> all of a sudden we start seeing dinosaur ghosts. Yeah. Well, like, that, oh, shit, that smells real. like an actual sequel because if Hollywood hears you, their ideas are bad enough. This could happen. That's true. Yeah. Yep. This time we didn't make any more dinosaurs in the park. They're just ghosts. <laughs> yeah. The guy who killed ghosts Hitler. Finally. Death and, finds a way. Yeah. Oh, Jack go. Goldblum finds a way. Um, <laughs> they're uh, they're disappearing in front of my eyes. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. I like that. Oh, thank you. I really like that. Yeah. The, the movie would be the guy who killed Hitler and then the Bigfoot and then the ghost then, dinosaur. The ghost dinosaur. And then the rotor ghost the, the ghost. the ghost dinosaur. There you go. Yeah. I want to. I want to go T Rex. I want to ride one. Wow. Was there only one Bigfoot? There's only one. Just the one. Where would he come from? And that, like, no one cared until after he killed all Canada and was coming to the United States. That's because Sasquatch and the Abominable Snowman are different than Bigfoot. And then but the Yeti, and then the Bigfoot? Skunk Ape, and then <laughs> the oh, skunk yeah, ape. Yeti. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you got Momo. If they if they're gonna do that though, if they're gonna like, if there's only one of something left, go send the CEO of Jimmy John's over because he seems to kill like everything when he's about ready to. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by the guys that say don't fucking eat at Jimmy John's because that guy like kills all sorts of extinct animals. How do you kill an extinct animal? Well, he makes them extinct or <laughs> going extinct. <laughs> now we're splitting Bigfoot hairs. You know, <laughs> do you know how you could Range. kill an animal that's extinct? You get a hold of Jose Canseco's friend. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Morgan. Call Morgan. Call, call, call Morgan. Seven oh two. You shoot whatever you wanted. I want. I killed a dodo once. I was like, hold that guy. Yeah, it only okay. happened in Vegas, so. <laughs> That's you know, right. You know, it's, really, it's really what I said about the, the dodos, is they had never seen humans before, so they didn't know to be scared. That's right. So, so there's dodo like, oh, ghosts. Hey, what's up? Oh, there, would there be a dodo ghost? Well, they, would, do they have an unresolved business? <laughs> well, actually, it was, the, it was the dodo, they didn't know, plus the rats. There was all the rats on the boats and just populated the area and killed other dodos, the, uh, the dodos too. But the dodos didn't know. They were just dumb. Why? That's what they said. They were dumb. They'd never been around humans before. So the dodo would just walk up and they go, hey, what's up, pirate guy? What's up, Mr. Guy on a boat? We're just chilling here on the beach. What do you do? <laughs> I mean, you talk about, like, we've mastered genocide on boats. Like, we can just go there and find a civilization, give them a high five, and give them some small pock blankets and <laughs> let them go to town. But, like, the dodos, like, they never said How do you know so much about dodo birds? 
I'm Wait, don't you know about dodo birds? Oh, well, I didn't know that much. I think that if ghosts were, like, if, if grief causes and regret causes you to become a ghost, would lemmings have the most, like, percentage of ghosts? <laughs> if they're just following everybody off the Or like, like, I totally... What about the dodo birds? You know, those are chased off. Disney, like, the Disney producers, like, chased them off. Of <laughs> yeah, we, that we video, they, think, they did. Like, they were, like, trying to, they chased them off. That's fantastic. They were just all running off. They the, scared the crap out of them and filmed it. Those feigning goats. <laughs> and they just fall. That's so great. It is. Are, are they having near death experiences? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> the men who stare at goats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think this is. I think we we covered a lot. We covered a lot more than I thought we were going to cover, which is really really cool. So uh, yeah, I feel uh, it's a pretty educational one. This is a good. This is a good one. Are we going to actually try and get <laughs> a big box? Can we order like a twenty five dollar debit box? Yeah, we should. Yeah, we can. Uh, let's ask our producer. Hey, Tony. Yep. Uh, yeah, can we put it on your credit card? Is that okay, Tony? <laughs> oh, I was right enough. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's his business expense. Ooh. So, uh, let's, let's, we, so we talked about some flat earth. So we talked about a movie. We talked about we talked about some good stuff. I think next week, we don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but it's going to be really good. But uh, at this point, I want to do say, uh, so we have a Facebook page now. So be sure to go on there and follow us. Yeah, you'll be able to see those videos that we were talking about, too. Yeah, yeah, we'll post those. And then we'll... Um, oh, we're on Spotify. We're on Spotify. So uh, we're on iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher. Or the, and, I mean, I think if you just Google us, it will just pop up in some of the locations as well. And uh, I haven't got the web page together yet, but I'm going to. I've just been a busy individual. But we'll make it on there so people can comment and send us suggestions and things like that. We're hunting for those real ghosts every minute. Every Anybody day. want to plug anything real quick before uh, you want to plug? Are we going to talk about the mattress theory next time? Oh, we didn't talk about that. Theory. Yeah. That's a good theory. It is. Uh, I do have a really good theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we can. We'll talk about that next time. That's Because uh, we've experienced that in a while. I'm making a note. Oh, she's all about lists. She really is. That's why she's our producer, because she makes really good lists. Mm-hmm. Do you, um, you want to give a little tidbit of what we're talking about so people don't try to look up the mattress theory on Google. The ghost mattress. Oh, well, because we're dealing like, it's, it's our own inter- Google you, you won't find anything <laughs> online about it because it's our own theory. But Essentially, mm-hmm. we have a connection with ghosts and mattresses in the living room. People leave a mattress in the living room. Mm-hmm. Memory have, foam and never proof. forgets. We have scientific mm-hmm. proof backing this. Was that? What, what? I said memory foam and never forgets. No, yeah. seriously. And they tell you, like, right on the commercial how much sweat, skin cell, and you, you leave in your mattress every night. So, so. I, I mean, I have a, uh, a memory foam, but it came all rolled up, like, in the fetal position. So, like, what kind of memories did this thing, like, come with? <laughs> <laughs> like, this poor thing, like, oh, I'm seeing <laughs> shit, man. Like, it's brand new. I'm seeing shit. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and so, my, yeah, I don't really want to think about what mattress is seeing now, so... Uh, all right. Well, anyway, so that's it. So uh, eat, drink, and be scary. Mm-hmm. With uh, Tom and Ryan and Tanya and myself, Bill, and uh, and, and quick, anything want to plug anything real quick? You want to send them down to? Hey, go to Facebook. And go to uh, Alter Egos. Oh yeah, is, Alter uh, Egos Boise. A L T A R E G O S. Check out some of the goods on there. Yeah, if you're within three uh, miles, just drive. Tom still is not telling us his porn site, his pixelated porn site yet, but uh, mm-hmm. we'll get him. You're just gonna have to find it. Around on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> All thumbs. <laughs> Although uh, I did have... Uh, Check out that interesting stuff you find. I had a friend that listened to it, and uh, uh, my friend Katie, she said she knew me. So. That's pretty cool. From the website? Dude, Tom. I, I, no, 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 she went to high school. Uh, you guys went to high school together? Yeah, so? we actually did go to high school together, yeah. I did go to high school at some point, believe it or not. Well, you showed up? I'm educated. Well, I mean, like, it does. <laughs> I mean, like, I didn't attend high school the whole time. I went to high school building. I didn't know I was going to be in the hot seat here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that 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 <laughs> and uh, so, uh, real quick, uh, Oscars are tonight, and they don't have a host. They have a ghost host, right? Because you know what? Host. Do you think the Oscars going to be hot? I mean, like, if there's going to be something that's going to be going on for, what, how long? How long have they been that? 60 years? Oh, mm-hmm. well, no, it's been longer than that, right? The Academy's been having since the, before the, about the 30s, I think. Yeah, it's been going on. I thought it was the Academy. For some reason, I thought it was 80, but it was on for 80 years. Do you think Bigfoot belongs to the Academy? Well, I, I hope Sam Elliott wins an award for Ooh. for the Bigfoot, for the range Bigfoot. How do we lobby for that? We don't. It's too late. We already missed that. We, we don't. don't. So. All right. So anyway, with that, uh, thanks for listening, and good night. Say good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.